Hello everybody, Adam here once again with another short training series for up and coming web programmers. In this video lesson series, you'll be learning how to create your own custom WYSIWYG rich text editor that you can apply to all of your custom PHP and MySQL web applications. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And applying a rich text editor allows your users to format their text using HTML and JavaScript in this case. And for any of you guys that would like to know how to do this using Flash and ActionScript 3, we already made that lesson a couple of years ago, and you can click here on screen right now to view that lesson series if you'd rather see how this is done using Flash and ActionScript 3.0. This will be a very short training series in JavaScript, as the method we use makes things very easy for us. And we'll discuss programming it, some design tips, and some PHP parsing tips after we get the thing built. Now this content will no doubt anger many wannabe super dorks out there who get mad because my code is so funky fresh and the way I teach is so simplistic. So I had my friend Tupac record a message just for them in their comments. And if I may, I'll play it now as a preemptive rebuttal to their comments. Y'all niggas ain't even on my level. I'ma let my little homies ride on you bitch made ass yeah, yeah, bad boy bitch. Yeah. Okay, before we start getting our hands dirty with the code, I want to show you guys the finished product of what you're going to be learning how to assemble throughout this series. What I have here is one text field, and then I have a text area here. You can see in my title field, I can put whatever I want my title to be there. And then here I can type some text. Now let's make these last few words bold. Let's change the text size to 5. And let's change the text color to teal. And let's also add links right here. Let's add one link. I want that to go to www. Okay, and then there's a link. You can also add images, and uh, as far as we're going to go with this base WYSIWYG, you're going to have bolding, underlining, italicizing, text size, text color, adding horizontal rule. You can add ordered lists and unordered lists as well. See there? links and images. Now there's more you can do with the WYSIWYG, but for this tutorial series, that's as far as we're going to go with it. And there are also nicer formats for allowing people to choose color, size, and things like that, but I just made it very simple using prompts. You see this prompt window that tells you to apply a hexadecimal color? Or you can type in any color that you like. I felt that gave the people who are going to be using mine more freedom over what kind of colors they can apply. You can see I made this teal just by typing in teal. Let's say I want to make this one silver. That selection is now silver, see? Now let's press submit data. And you can see here, you posted, and this is the PHP script that's the parse file. It shows the title that we posted and all of the data within that text area. Now let's make sure you guys know that this also works. I'm in Firefox right now. Let's show you that it also works in Internet Explorer and Chrome. And let's press Submit Data. Let's try Internet Explorer. Let's change the color of that to turquoise. And let's change its size to 2. OK, and it's going to become smaller, see? Submit Data, and there you go. So it's formatted, and it also has tags in it now, which are HTML tags helping that keep that format, OK? So that's how it all works. Now you've seen it working in Internet Explorer, Chrome, and Firefox and most other popular browsers that are out on the market today, they use a derivative of those engines anyway. So once it works in Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Chrome, you can rest assured that it's going to work in most others. OK, we're going to start off with a very basic simulated project that might reflect something that you have going on your server, where you have an HTML form with just a couple of input fields and a text area. And I just have one input field here, that's for the title. You can see its name is title and its ID is title. And then my text area is set up right here, and that's for the entry body. Its name is my text area, its ID my text area. All right, very basic stuff that anybody could use Dreamweaver to just pop out these fields or whatever. It's a very basic application that parses to a PHP script called myparsewild.php. So this is what it looks like, and when the person presses submit, it's going to parse to this PHP file right here, which is set up very basic at this point in the game. There's no filtering or anything going on. We just want to see what the person posted to make sure that things are working correctly at first. 
So I'm just echoing out, you posted the post data title and the post data my text area. So you can see this is what I have here is a very basic working application. And we're just going to add to this and expand upon it. That way you guys can take your existing applications and apply these WYSIWYG techniques to them. And in this first video, we're going to focus on this index page, or really the page where your form lives, where the user is filling out the form and composing the text and everything. Now the first thing we're going to do is go into the head tag of the document, and we're going to apply a JavaScript file. It's going to be an external JavaScript file that's going to hold all of the functionality for your WYSIWYG. That way, this page doesn't get bogged down with a lot of code in it, when you can externalize things and make it a lot neater. So most of the JavaScript that we create for this application is going to be within a folder called WYSIWYG in a file called WYSIWYG.js, a JavaScript file, which we have not even created yet. We're just getting ready to link to it. Now the next thing to do is add to the body tag on load equals iframe on. And that's a function that's going to be within that WYSIWYG.js file. A function named iframe on is going to be within that WYSIWYG file that we put up. And that's going to be for the iframe that we apply to replace this text area, okay? And it's going to initialize it to be in design mode when the document is fully loaded. Now, let's take our target text area and let's get it all separate by itself there. What we're going to do is underneath that, we're going to place in an iframe. Its name is rich text field. Its ID is equal to rich text field as well. And you can see I have some styling, which is inline CSS, which you can choose to make your CSS styling external or put it in the head of your document. I just have it inline for simplicity. But maybe in the end, when you want to neaten things up and externalize all files, you'll put this CSS for this iframe within an external CSS file or whatever. But you can use inline styling if you like. Now, let's pop in a comment here that says hide, but keep your normal text area and place the iframe replacement for it. So you can see I already replaced the iframe replacement for the text area. Now let's make sure we hide it. And we can do that simply by saying text area space style display none. So I'm using some more inline CSS styling here to make this text area not display at all on the page. This text area is really just going to be for transferring this rich text fields data into when the form is finished and submit. So when the person presses submit, that's when you take the HTML, the inner HTML from this iframe and you place it within this text area and then that process is to PHP. Let's close off that comment. So you can see with uh, one line and a little bit of CSS styling, you can totally replace your text area with an iframe. That's going to be our rich text field. Now we don't want the form to just parse to the myparsefile.php when this submit button is pressed. So we're going to replace that submit button, the normal submit type button, with a type of button that's not submit, but it still looks like a button. And what it's going to do is on click of that button, it's going to run a JavaScript function within our WYSIWYG.js file called submit form. So you can just remove this button and replace it with that one. So like I said, you don't want the form to actually parse to the PHP file without JavaScript being involved in this case. So we're going to put a button there. That's not a submit type. It's just a regular button type. It should, this can actually also be a link whose on-click event can be to fire off this JavaScript function called submit form. Now let's see what we have in design view here. Now that's good. We have an iframe that's going to be content editable. Now what we want right above that iframe is like a control bar that's going to hold the little bold button, the italics button, the button for making links, etc. It's going to be like your WYSIWYG control panel for formatting things. So right under entry body, let's add a space, pop here into line 10, a div with some buttons in it. Regular little HTML form buttons. So you can see here is my div that I just placed in, and it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 buttons. You can see what they're going to do. This button is going to be for bolding things. This button is going to be for underlining. This one is going to run a function called I italic. This one's going to run a function called I font size, so on and so forth. All these buttons are set on click to run a JavaScript function that's going to be all within our WYSIWYG.js file. So now if you go into design view, after putting in that div that holds your little control buttons, you'll see this. And let's make sure we put a line break here before the submit data button. Where's that? 
right here. Let's put a break. That way it goes under there. Let's put two breaks. Press Control S to save. Okay, so that wraps up the functionality we need on our page that holds the form. In the next video, we're going to create this WYSIWYG.js file, which is going to hold our eye bold and eye underline and all these little functions here, and also the function that we're going to need to submit the form and the function for iframe on, which turns this iframe into content editable or design mode on. Okay, so stay tuned for part two, and you'll see that this WYSIWYG.js is oh so simple. You guys won't have any problem comprehending what's going on inside of that file. And then the last thing we'll do in the third video, I guess, is we'll discuss taking that posted data from the text area and make sure we talk about replacing the HTML characters to HTML entities. We'll talk about filtering and stripping things and making sure it's safe to put in a database and also display and trust that data to display upon your website. All right, so the next part is creating the WYSIWYG.js file, which holds all of the functions that are defined on this HTML page or in this form. And we're going to be using JavaScript to actually submit the form. This button is just going to be a fire off a function called submit form. Within that function, submit form is going to be a line of code that's going to actually submit the form. After we take this rich text field out of the iframe data, the inner HTML text, and put it into this text area. That way it can be easily transferred right along with all the other fields in this form. Alright, so we'll see you in part two.